Good morning. Welcome to the third Sunday in Lent. Welcome, welcome. It is good to be here, whether you're here in person or watching on TV. It is good to be here with you. You make this time a fuller blessing just because you're here. If you've been here before, it's good that you're back. If this is your first time, please check our welcome table in the entryway on your way out this morning. Um, check in because we have a little, a little gift for you to take home. If you've been here before and you didn't get the gift because we were a little, you know, having, anyway, um, stop by there too and we'll, we'll make sure that, that, that you get that gift as well. Let us know if this time is a blessing for you, whether you're watching on TV or here with us in person. Especially if you're watching on TV, we'd like to hear from you. If you could give us a call at um, 879-1535 or check with us at email at oursaviorscloquet.org. Um, let us know if this time is a blessing for you. Those of you who are here in person, the little brown get-to-know-your-neighbor books work as, a, work as a great way to both get the written invitation to communion you are all invited to that. And also to connect with us if you have any prayer needs, that tear-off prayer card in the bulletin works very well for that as well. So I'm glad that you're here this morning. It's good to be here because we need to know what it needs, what God has in mind for us to help us deal with the sin that we face every day. Sin does bad stuff to us, bad stuff. But God has a way. Lent points us to the sign of that way. The cross and is that sign, and today is no exception for opening that reality to us. Today we get to hear some details of how God wants to help us all with what sin does. Because of what God does, we get to gather together in prayer, in praise, in thanksgiving. So let's get started. But first, first, we have somebody that has an important message about uh, something that's happening in another part of the building this morning. Thera, what's... Pastor, I'm so glad you're here. We have a big discussion going on about the kitchen. Uh-oh. That's a, that's a preschool problem. Yeah, no, no, that, they, that's a discussion. Okay. And you're the impartial person. Okay. And we also want you to taste this to see if it's okay. So I knew you weren't doing anything right now. No, I'm so not doing I know, anything. So I figured right that you now. should taste it. Okay. Not much warmer than first service. <laughs> um, like I said, it is our uh, fundraiser today. There's spaghetti going on down there. Uh, this silent auction, all kinds of neat things. There's a fishing trip. There's um, hotel stays. There's food. You name it, we got it down there for you, so come on down and see that. Tickets are $10, and uh, children are five, and we also have to-go boxes. So if you want to get your meal to go and, you know, get home, and I can't say watch football, there's no good stuff. So whatever you're going to do, um, make sure you get down there and get it. And thank you for all of your support. Is it good? Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Wow. Can you, can you, well, you want me to save it for you? I'll warm it up later. Have a good day. <laughs> so, yeah, you can do that right after church this morning. So, with, rise with me as we join in singing a number of songs that our praise team has ready to go for us. We thrive to start with.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who brings us safely through the sea, who gives us water from the rock, who leads us into the land of milk and honey. Amen. Let us come before God, confessing our sin. Merciful Father, we have sinned against heaven and before you. We have not fully lived as your sons and daughters. We use your gifts to our own ends. Forgive us and restore us that we may resist all that draws us away from you and be at peace with one another. Amen. We are reconciled to God through Christ. For his sake, God does not count our sins and trespasses against us. Once dead in sin, we are now alive to God. Once lost, we now are found. God clothes us all with the finest robes of all, the righteousness of Jesus Christ, forgiving us all our sins and making us a new creation. Amen. Join with me in the prayer of the day. Eternal God, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it and to bring your saving love to fruition in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
Our first reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 9. This prophecy is a call of celebration from God to abundant life, into an everlasting covenant of love. Images of good food are used to remind us that those who return to the Lord will enjoy new life and forgiveness, because God's ways are not our ways. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our Lord, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Word of God, word of life. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. The Apostle Paul reminds us that sin is everyone's issue, but there is a promise from God in the middle of any potential trouble. Listen carefully. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Word of God, word of life. As we prepare to hear this morning's gospel, would you rise with me, prepare your hearts and your minds to hear the story of Jesus. For the third Sunday in Lent, Luke chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. Jesus has been teaching. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way that they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it, and found none. So he said to his gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can have it cut down. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated, except for the youngest folk of the assembly. If you would come forward, please, for this morning's children's sermon. Come on up. (laughs) Come on over. Come on through. Oh, there's another one. Here we go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How's everybody today? Good, good. Well, I just read from one of the Gospels. Now, 
I just wanted to check in with you just to be sure that you know what a gospel is. Because we're always talking about this in church on Sunday mornings. The gospel of the Lord and the people go something, they say, you know, praise be to God or whatever. And I mean, but what's the gospel? The gospel is, the word means good news to start with. And what we normally talk about, there's four in the Bible, there's four gospels. And that's the name for the stories. So in the Bible, in the back, in the New Testament, there are four different guys who wrote about Jesus. They told all the stories about Jesus from when he was born to his growing up to when he was teaching people and healing people and doing miracles. And then when he died on the cross for us, that kind of, if gospel means good news, Somebody dying for us? How is that good news? Well, I guess it's what? Yeah. Because what? It, yes, it does. It breaks our sins. Exactly. And now during Lent, we're in this season of Lent. Everything's purple. There's crosses all around and everything. We, we get reminded of the, the gospel, the good news stories of Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. Okay, now... Wait a minute. What's a sin then? What do you think? A bad thing. Yes, it's a bad... We've got the answers today. It's a bad thing that we do that might hurt our family, hurt our friends. It might even hurt us. It might hurt our big brother. It might hurt our little sister. It's something. A sin is something wrong that we do that hurts. And Jesus calls us to repent, to, say, to let him help us say no to those wrong things that we do that hurt everybody. He had to die on the cross to make it possible for us to let go of all of the wrong things that we do that hurt each other. So the good news, the gospel, the reason that's called the gospel is that because Jesus gives us what it takes deal with the wrong things that we do that hurt each other. He wants to help us, and his cross does that. So whenever you see a cross, you can think about, good news? Oh, yeah, Jesus died for my sins, so they don't have to hurt anymore. Thanks for coming up. Christina's ready for kids' church for you if you want to go with her. Otherwise, have a great day this morning. Thank you. So what do those sins do, brothers and sisters in Christ? Sin does what to us? The little guy was right. He dies on the cross for us. The good news is that he dies on the cross for us for our sins, to break our sins. That's a cool way of talking about it. But we have to back up a little. The sins... The stuff that we do to each other, the stuff that we do to our relationship with God, the stuff that hurts, that hurts ourselves, that hurts each other, that hurts our spouses and our neighbors, and that hurt the country, that hurts our relationships all the way around, our relationship finally and ultimately with God. Sin does what? It hurts. It hurts you. It hurts me. It hurts our relationships with each other and with God. And God does something about it. We were created so that we would be in harmony with, with God and with each other. And so sin isn't, isn't the way God wants it to be. So God does something about it. But Jesus is clear. It's not governmental slaughter. In the gospel story this morning where Jesus goes, so when Pilate, that's a kind of a nasty little story. We don't know the whole story of what happened there, but apparently Pilate, the governor of Judea, for some reason invaded the temple, killed a bunch of Galileans who were about to offer their sacrifices and mingled their blood with, their, with the sacrifices that they were going to offer. And Jesus goes, they weren't worse that wasn't God using Pilate to, to kick those people down. And the tower falling on, on those 
80, 18 people. That's, that wasn't God going, oh, scumbags, gotcha. Ha! No, that wasn't it. God doesn't use governmental slaughter and falling towers. Those aren't God's work. Repentance is God's work. Repentance. Now, I have to admit, I have to confess that I've gotten repentance wrong for decades. Repentance, and I've taught you this, so forgive me, that repentance is stopping, turning around, and going in another direction. Stopping something bad that hurts, right? So that kind of, that's sort of right. That should be right, right? Well, here's the problem. It makes it seem as if repentance, my salvation, depends on me stopping and turning. It turns repentance, it turns salvation into a work that I do to get saved. And that's a problem. As if you're Lutheran, we don't believe in works righteousness. We don't get right by the work we do. God makes us right. So repentance, all these years now in the business, <laughs> finally get corrected here. Repentance is God's work on us. God is the one that stops us if we don't resist. Because that's our power. That's what we can do. We can go, God, you love me. Too bad, I'm out of here. We can repent from loving God. That's the power we have. We can go, forget it, Lord, dude. I'm going my own way, man. We can do that. We can reject. But the repentance, the going the right way, that is God's power in us. Repentance is God's work on us. Jesus is clear, and he goes clear back to, to the prophet Isaiah that we heard read to us this morning, calling us to return to the Lord, but you can't go back to God unless the Lord brings us back. For the Lord will abundantly pardon. The pardon comes from God. So powerful is God's response to what sin does then, that what, what, what is seen in, in God's people is supposed to be such a powerful witness that people will go, where are those people that God's hanging out with? Where are those people that are back with God? Where are those people that, that God is uniting with? We want to be a part of that. That whole prophecy in there about nations, as you don't even know, will come running to you. What, what, what we have with God, what God wants to have with us is supposed to be so bright and so brilliant and so powerful that the world will go, where is that? I want to be a part of that. That they come running to experience that community, that abundance, the glory of the Lord in our midst that the Holy One promises, that ancient prophecy, is that gift to us. Come to me. The Lord Yahweh invites. Who does he invite? Who does God invite into this relationship? You? You know, if you're feeling pretty good about your Christianity and you're like, yeah, I've got this relationship with God. I make mistakes once in a while, but yeah, okay, it's me. Yeah, God wants me at that feast. God wants to invite me into that, into that banquet. Yeah, those images of the banquet and that, and that rich, rich food. It's just, that's beautiful. Yeah, I want, I, yeah, it's me. I'll admit that I'm a sinner if I get to go to the banquet. But what about the sinner over there in the corner just outside the door? The one over in the dark corner that feels like there's nothing for him. Who's hungry and thirsty for the salvation and the love and the grace of God. Who maybe has heard of this forgiveness stuff and wants to walk into that glory. Who? Everyone the ancient prophecy tells us. Everyone who thirsts for salvation, everyone who hungers for love, come. Come without paying, without having to pay the price. Buy this best feast, Isaiah says. Buy it. 
But you don't have to pay for it. Come and pay the, just, you don't have to pay. Buy it. It's for you. You get to come. But without money, without price. Just listen. All it asks of you. Don't shut your ears to the, to the amazing grace, to the amazing whisper of God's love. That's all it asks. God's ways are amazing like that. Amazing beyond our heads to get it. Because I don't know about you, but there are times when I want the, 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 the sinner hiding over in the corner. Don't look. He's not over there. No. I want them to pay the price. I'm good enough to deserve it. You see how wrong I am here? Are we awake? Yeah? Okay. I want justice on my terms. I want those sinners to pay the price. And God goes, no, you're just like them. That's what Jesus says. Those people that the stuff falls on them, yeah, stuff falls. Evil happens. I read these stories and I, and I, and I hear warnings. I, there's an undercurrent of urgency. But God always ends up on the side of grace. God always ends up at the cross. God always ends up at the sacrifice for you and for me and for everybody. Power to repent is God's power. God even promises a way through and out of any sin right back to grace. Grace, that free gift from God of love, forgiveness through repentance. Hear that Corinthian promise again that Linda read for us, this time from the message version. No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. In other words, there's a sin out there. You're running into something that you, that you think is unique to you. You're running into some trouble. Everybody has it. It's all out there. Everybody, everybody sins. Everybody's in trouble. All you need to remember, back to the Corinthians text, all you need to remember is that God will never let you down. God will never let you be pushed past your limit. God always will be there to help you come through it. Now, somehow this Corinthians text has gotten translated and messed up in our, in our world to this notion that God will never give you more than you can handle. You've heard that, right? And maybe thought that's a good thing. I don't want to burst your bubble, but I have to. It's not what the Corinthians text says. And I looked other places to see if the Bible does this. God will never give you more than you can handle. How many have heard that? not in the Bible. This text is the one that gets twisted just a little bit to make it sound like it. This isn't about, and, and, we always, and it gets twisted just a little bit to make it, if I'm suffering, well, God must have sent that to me to teach me a lesson. If you're suffering, well, you know, God must love you so much that he knows you can handle it, so he'll dump it on you because you're tough. I've heard it twisted that direction, too. It's not in the Bible. God, first place, God does not dump the crap on you. Crap will fall, fertilizer, manure. It does fall, but that's not God dumping on you. And if, you're, if you've been clinging to that, it's sort of, yeah, God, dump on me, please. If you have to let go of that this morning, I'm really, really sorry. Let's go have spaghetti and we'll talk about it. So in the first place, God, is, God doesn't go, okay, we're not going to let it happen to Linda. Splash. Oh, okay. Well, she'll have to get it instead because I just missed it. No! Stuff happens. Fertilizer falls. But God doesn't do it. And it's not about sickness. It's not about losing your job. It's not about suffering. It's about sin. 
It's about temptation. What this promise is, is that the temptation that it's going to come your way, and it is going to come your way. God, what God will do in the midst of, trans, of, that, of temptation is give you a way out. Oh, look, over there, it's the way out. Mike's taking it. That's what God does here. Those of you who are Lutheran have been through the catechism, so you know what Luther says about this. God doesn't send the sin. The verse says temptation comes our way, not that God sends us. And remember your catechism from the meaning of the sixth petition of the Lord's Prayer. Maybe you pray this on a daily basis. I know we do it I, on Sundays, we like, at least twice here. Maybe you use it several times a day. The sixth petition, lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. The catechism, Luther. It's true that God tempts no one to sin. But we ask in this prayer that God would preserve and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our sinful selves may not deceive us and mislead us into false belief, despair, and other great and shameful sins. And that though, although we are attacked by them, and just a little aside, you will be attacked by them. We may finally prevail and gain the victory. This verse isn't about suffering and God's, God will help us through suffering, but God doesn't send us. And sometimes the suffering might be a temptation to us to give up and run away from God. But this text is about God giving us the way out. God does not send the test. Instead, God leads and empowers us for repentance, for the way out. Temptation attacks, but repentance, returning to God, is the way out, and God provides it. So that repentance is God at work in us, drawing us back to the godly abundance. Knowing what sin can do, and God knows. God knows every little struggle that sin places the devil, the world, and our sinful selves places in our religion. God knows the hurt that we do to each other. And God knows the pains of this life and how that sometimes feels like it can wound and hurt our relationship with God himself. Knowing what sin can do, God in Jesus intercedes on our behalf. Let me tend it. This fig tree that is our lives, Jesus promises. Let me dig around at the root of the problem. Let me use the fertilizer that's going to come anyway. Fertilize it into, fr into fruitfulness. The prophecy that we heard from Isaiah almost as old as time is God inviting us into the abundance of community. God's community, into the very best of the best of the best, encouraging us not to block God from empowering us to be and to experience and to relish this best feast, allowing us instead to be the people together who experience and share those most excellent ways, imprinting God's image upon our hearts. Our next song, short to the point, asks that very prayer to let that imprint of God be clear and plain and pure upon our hearts. Eight eleven in the hymn book, if you need the music, the words are on the screen.
right. At this time this morning, we have a baptism. Bo gets to be baptized today. So I would invite the wedding, yeah, the wedding party. <laughs> no, the baptismal party to come on down. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. good. All right. Yes. Kind of thought so, but no. Okay, good. All right. We're talking about a God here who is rich in mercy and love, who gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized into one body, the body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. So, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Bo Allen Leonardson baptized into Christ? I do. Cool. As you bring Bo to receive this gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and to nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, and to care for others and the world God made and to work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Bo grow in the Christian faith and life? Sponsors? Good. As his big brother, it's part of your job. Absolutely. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Bo in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? I do. People of God, do you promise to support Bo Allen Leonardson and pray for him in his new life in Christ? Then, speaking for yourselves as his parents and his sponsors, but also speaking for him until he gets his words and his own voice, I'm going to ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and to confess the faith of the church. Parents and sponsors, speaking for him, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world? that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? And I invite the rest of the assembly to rise and join in as, again, speaking for yourselves, but speaking also for Bo. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. 
Amen. Come on down, Bo. And I baptize you. Bo, Alan, Lennox, and I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be God, source of all life, the word of salvation, the spirit of mercy. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and for raising them to eternal life. Sustain Bo with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Bo Allen Leonardson, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let your light so shine so that others will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. On behalf of Bo, receive that light and remind him of it whenever you get the chance. Bo, let's go meet your brothers and sisters. Should we? All right. Join in the welcome. We welcome you. In Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Bo? That's them. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be with you all. Share that peace with one another. Okay. We begin the process of gathering this morning's offering. Thank you to all of you for being here this morning. God's blessings upon each and every one of you. Um, Thera was here a little while ago to remind you about spaghetti that's going on there, so head on down there as soon as you are able. Not now. We still have communion. Um, speaking of offering, the... Uh, Matching fund update to date after last Sunday. We're up to $6,500 of the $20,000 goal. So thank you very much for your support and the moving forward with that. Um, keep that in, in your prayers and your opportunities moving forward. Our community was saddened this week by news of the death of, of Jim Hagen, a community member beloved throughout the Cloquet area. Um, it's Jack's brother and Vicky's brother-in-law. His funeral will be here on Thursday. Pastor Raleigh is going to be here to, to share the word and, and offer comfort to the gathered community for that. So, um, but keep the Hagen family in your prayers as we will this morning as well. Um, there's, if our um, parking lot is any indication, the ice is still going to be pretty decent up at Lake of the Woods in uh, two weekends for the men's, second men's fishing trip of the season. Um, if you've all one men, if you've always wanted to go on our fishing trip and haven't been able to, this is your opportunity. If you've been on the fishing trip and want to go again, this is your opportunity. If you've thought, never thought about going on this fishing trip, but you know, this is your opportunity. Um, we'll be going the weekend of the 11th, 12th, and 13th of March. We're 
it's supposed to get cold again. So there's plenty of ice up at Lake of the Woods right now. So we'll just pray that it holds up for another couple of weeks till we can get there. So uh, speak to myself. I'm not sure if Ron is still here today, but if you're interested in going, talk to me. And uh, we'll make sure that uh, you get on the list and uh, that, that that trip happens. So bear, bear that in mind. Thank you for your financial support this morning and for your being here today. Um, may God's love richly bless you. Um, one note about communion today, you, everyone is invited. You don't have to be Lutheran. You don't have to be a member here. If you believe that in, with, and under the bread and wine, we truly experience the body and blood of Jesus. It's another way that God's grace comes to us. You are welcome to come to the Lord's table. We'll be serving at two stations. If you need gluten-free, that's at the left-hand station. The inner ring of each wine tray has grape juice if you need that. There's grapes for the youngest members of the assembly, um, just uh, as a way to, to share that, the reality of that grace with, with them as well. You are all welcome come here to share in that gift. As your gifts are blessed this morning, as we pray a prayer of thanksgiving over them, would you please rise with me and join in that prayer? God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hearing then the call to return to the Lord, let us join the whole people of God in prayer for all who cry out in pain and for all who cry in hope. We praise and thank you, faithful God, for you call us home. You promise abundance. You heal our broken lives. Open us to receive your word. Transform our thoughts into your thoughts and our ways into your ways for the glory of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise and thank you, faithful God, for you entrust this world, the world you created, to our care. Help us be aware of the ways we have failed to care well for this gift. Quench the thirst of the earth and of every living creature. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise and thank you, faithful God, that you call some of your people to the vocation of public leadership. Help those who have mistaken that call to relinquish their misguided quest as they quest for power. Make all governments thirst for your justice. Bring citizens and elected officials together to create communities where all people may live in peace. Sustain us by your grace in this work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise and thank you, faithful God, that you have shaped this world with the capacity to feed and protect all creatures, all people. We have failed to nurture that abundance. So help us repent that together with you, we may fill the cups of the, of the thirsty and fill the plates of the hungry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise and thank you, faithful God, that your healing includes our bodies for a time as well as our souls for eternity. Give peace to all who mourn and healing to all who live with illnesses of any type, of body, mind, or spirit. Be with all who suffer in any way, including the Hagen family and others whom we lift to you and name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise and thank you, faithful God, that your church can repent to be true witness to your son Jesus. Help us discern when we are being led astray by those who falsely claim your blessing upon their greed, fear, hatred, or anger. Lead and guide church leaders of any tradition, bishops, assistants, pastors, elders, congregational leaders of any sort, teachers, to teach and to support your loving ways. 
satisfy and unite us with the body and blood of your Son. Send us out to share the bountiful feast you give to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Whatever else you, Lord, see that we need, whatever lies hidden deep within us, or that which we think is too insignificant, that which we've forgotten to thank you for, help us to turn all of it over to you in the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to hear and remember the words of our Lord Jesus, who gave us this holy supper, hear us, O Lord. In response to the call of God, the command of Jesus Christ, and the bond of our common faith, we come to the table. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. In response to the love of our Creator and remembering the death and resurrection of Jesus, our Savior, we come to the table. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. The grapes are a reminder of God's love and forgiveness for the youngest of our assembly, a reminder of the same story, the same truth, the same gospel, the same love of God. Following our Lord's command and responding to our need for forgiveness, we come. Please be seated. In a moment, the ushers will be inviting you forward for communion. We begin on the outside and work our way from the back towards the front, coming down the center aisle.
As you are able, will you rise with me, please? And let the blessing of this feast strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Please pray with me. Oh God, we thank you for gathering and feeding us as a mother hen embraces her young. Release us now to go on our ways into these 40 days, ready to see our work as prayer, ready to fast from complacency, and ready to share with those in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Eternal God, whose glory is revealed in the risen and crucified Lord, bless those who go forth to share your word and sacrament with our sisters and brothers who cannot be with us. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those to whom we bring this communion in the body and blood of your Son, that we may all feast upon your abundant love made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The psalm for the day is placed at the end this day to center our hearts on the fullness of God's message, on his invitation to us, on his power to repent in our lives. Please read responsively. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your steadfast love is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My spirit is content as with the richest of foods and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my helper and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My whole being clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Oh 